kitchen. How are you feeling? It's Central, how are you? It's very good. Fine, thank good. you. What's the secret about tonight's service? What are you going to do differently? We're going to do everything perfectly, Gordon. Everything perfectly? Yes, Chef. Glad to hear it. Actor, how are you? I'm very excited. Yeah. Um, just want to serve my customers. Yeah. Now, only one of you can walk out here this evening as a winner. Yes, Chef. Yes. You're here because you're the best. You've got to prove it now. Curry Corner from Cheltenham and Lasanne from Birmingham are our top two Indian contenders. Here's how I found them. We're a nation of curry fans. It's one of Britain's favourite dishes. And you, the F-word viewers, nominated hundreds of Indian restaurants. But we could only choose two to compete in the F-word kitchen. The search took us all over Britain. Determined to find the very best, we went to visit your culinary heroes. From Nottingham to Portsmouth, London to Tamworth, Southampton to Leeds. All of these things got very definite flavours. It's absolutely delicious. We tasted food fit for the Maharaja. But sometimes the surroundings weren't quite so impressive. I hope the food's good. The decor was shocking. I feel like I'm in Pete Doherty's bathroom. This is proper, authentic Indian food served inside a cafe with cafe prices. The food is delicious. It looks like this menu has been, uh, has been here, has been sitting here for ages. It's absolutely disgusting. After months of whittling down the nominations, we finally found two outstanding restaurants. Curry Corner in Cheltenham gave us a fantastically warm welcome. Nestling in the heart of the Cotswolds, this is one of the oldest Bangladeshi restaurants in Britain. How are you? Good, Good to Josh, see you. How are you? Oh, very well indeed, thank you. What a lovely place. Head chef Samshel Crowry is still going strong at 59. Helped in the kitchen by his wife Salaha and daughter Marusha. My God, look at the size of the kitchen. It's small, it's minute. So, you're not the head chef, are you? I think if I claim to be the head chef, my head would be off, so right. I won't even bother. Good. You yeah, have a very nice yeah. eye. This way you see everything nice. So are you yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Which people got nice eye? Can you just leave us alone for two minutes, please? You have a quick chat with your mother. Thank you. <laughs> Talk about a proper family-run, friendly business. Incredible. In the kitchen with your wife, your daughter, and your son in front of the house. He's been cooking for 42 years. That's before I was fucking born. Every single person in this family loves food, cooks it, eats it, thinks about it every single moment. First up for me, samosas. Extraordinary food. You have to travel to Bangladesh to get that kind of flavor. And he's managed it. Lamshan. What do you got? The lamb shank just slides down the bone. I mean, it's cooked perfectly. I haven't even tasted it yet, but you can just tell. Mm. That is fucking amazing. It would be an absolute dream come true to win the f best local restaurant. It would mean the world to us. I'm happy we're going to win. Thank you for that. Um, my problem is that this is a tough category because there are amazing Indian restaurants across the country. Sadly, the bad news is there's only two restaurants that can go through to the F-word restaurants. Congratulations, you're one of them. Oh, my God! Well Next time, it's going to be the F-word restaurant for 50 diners. And trust That's me, fine, they're tough cookies. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you I'll see much. you in London. Definitely the right decision, without a shadow of doubt. This place is unique. It's refined. They've managed to focus on flavour. Gordon's expecting great things from us, so we just hope we can deliver. Oh, yes. You don't worry. OK. OK. <laughs> so, Curry Corner from Cheltenham is through. And in a group with such high standards, we found a brilliant and worthy opponent, Lasanne in Birmingham. Good to see you. Good to see you. Stunningly stylish, Lasanne is a city centre favourite. Head chef Akhtar Islam was just 22 years old when he opened the restaurant with his best friend, Jabba. The young guns from the Midlands are determined to be different with cutting-edge cuisine. For Birmingham, we were the pioneers. We were the first restaurant to break away from the mainstream and offer alternatives to your Baltis and your tikka masalas. That's exquisitely presented. Finesse. Very competitive. You know, we set out to be number one, and hopefully one day we'll make it. Hold the baby. Chicken, thank you. Wow, well, with fried ginger. Mm. What's the ambition, Lasan? What is it? It's not food for uh, people who haven't got an educated palate. It is a very sophisticated cuisine. I haven't come across any Indian food anyway yet with fried leeks, sun-dried tomatoes, <laughs> fried ginger. Dried. That's, that's dried in the oven. I mean, it's just everything that goes into the actual food itself. Yeah. 
that is as authentic. We just ultimately we're trying to bring the food forward a bit. So you're yeah. looking for a Michelin star, or are you looking for? I'm, I'm hoping to get a Michelin star. Yeah, that's the plan. I love his arrogance because he reminds me very similar to myself. You know, 15 years ago. The biggest problem that you have today is that you're trying too hard. The arrogance versus the confidence. You've got a little bit of me in there. And you know, there's only two restaurants that can go through and cook in the F word. And you're one of them. Congratulations. Yeah, well Thank done. you very <gasps> much. Just. I do want to kiss you. Yeah. <laughs> Woo, we've done it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. It is probably the, the biggest thing that has ever happened to any of us. I definitely think I've made the right decision at Les uh, One hell of a cocky chef, young, but bloody talented. So, I found my top two Indian restaurants. Will the F-word diners prefer curry corners, traditional charm, or Lasan's ambitious modern take on Indian food? Who will be crowned the F-word's best local Indian restaurant? We're about to find out. Now, both teams are going to cook 25 portions of the starters and make sure those customers pay for your food. Right, yes. Excited? Yes, Chef. Yeah? OK, let's go. On two stations, let's get ready for the starters, yeah? Thank Let's you. go. Thank you. Yep. We're back in London at the F Word restaurant. And tonight is Indian night. The value of the Indian food market in Britain is around £500 million. But who does it best? We searched the country and found the F Word's top two local Indian restaurants Lasan in Birmingham and Curry Corner in Cheltenham. OK, guys, first couple of tables coming in. Right, Lasan, yeah. listen up, please. On order, four covers, table one, four lamb samosas. Yes, chef. yes chef. Yes. You don't have to shout for theirs, but thank you anyway. <laughs> right, Curry Corner, listen up, please. Yes, four chef. covers, table four, yes? Yes, chef. Four lamb samosas. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Tonight, both brigades are kicking off with samosas. Here's my recipe for this delicious Indian starter. Chickpea samosas. Delicious, simple and so straightforward. First, the filling. Vegetable oil. Not too hot. Don't want to burn those spices. Curry powder. Garam masala, cumin, turmeric, fry, onion. In to the spices. Season. Cream chili. Just wakes everything up. Garlic, ginger. Next, add chickpeas and peas. Water. Nice. Simmer. Lemon juice. Lightly crush. Cool. Samosa dough. Roll. Cut out. Take the disc and just cut it in half. Form a little cone. Fill. Water. Seal. Nip together. Nice and gently. Hot pan. Vegetable oil. Fry. Salad. Out. Chickpea samosas with salad and raita dressing. Done. Guys, this is not a race, OK? It's a restaurant. Akhtar? Yes, Chef. Give me time on the first four, please. Yes, sir. No, first four, yes. how long? Two minutes. Thank, Thank you, Chef. Good man. Excellent. Both restaurants are cooking their own samosa recipes. It'll be interesting to see who comes out on top. Lasan in Birmingham pride themselves on taking authentic Indian cooking in an exciting and modern direction. It's, it's, it's an old, old boys club, um, and we are the, the new generation. For their lamb samosa, they marinate the meat in raw papaya paste for 24 hours to make sure it's exquisitely tender. And they're using a special kind of thin biscuity pastry called nimki, adding nigella seeds for an aromatic flavour. Akhtar, the filling inside the samosa is lamb, and that's spiced with the usual, you know, you've got chilli, turmeric. <laughs> braised. It is braised, but then what we do, we totally evaporate all the, the sauce, and then we just pound it, mix it with some mm -hmm. mint and coriander, mm -hmm. and it's just uh, put into the pastry. Very I think you'll enjoy street it, food. Chef. Yeah, I hope the diners like it as well. Those first four, Akhtar, that's look fantastic, yes? We've got six coming, well we've got done. six, yeah. then we've got a... Now, you're using a cutter for yours, yeah? Yes. Okay, and what's the secret behind that? The secret behind it is it, it'll just seal the pastry off. Yep. And also, this is how it's made at home. Family run Curry Corner in Cheltenham 
have been serving their traditional home-style Indian food for 32 years. We've got probably 100 years' worth of um, cooking experience between all of us. Our family's all about food, and I don't think you can beat that. For their samosa filling, Curry Corner cooked the lamb with roast spices, cinnamon, cardamom, bay leaves and cloves. For their dough, they're using a light whole wheat flour that can be rolled out into a much thinner pastry. This recipe is actually my grandmother's original grandmother's recipe. recipe. Wow. Um, so well, there's a lot more home style it's my, it's as opposed to La Seine. Any, any of my cooking, I mean, samosa, any of my cooking, yep. my home cooking, I always follow my mom's step. Yeah. They look fantastic. Away now. Five more, please. Yes, they look sir. beautiful. Well done. Actor. So you're quite a modern young cook. Thank you very does it much. annoy you when Lagerlats turn up to the restaurant expecting a chicken tikka masala and yeah, a beer? It, it does. It does annoy me. It's not something that uh, you know an experience I have to endure very often. Indian food can offer so much more. So why take up menu space with a tikka masala? Right. Simple as. In my kitchens, I'll never serve that. You'll never serve a chicken tikka masala. Never serve a chicken tikka masala. If you try my masala, I challenge and nobody make in the UK my masala. You have the best I, I masala. I challenge any chef. You, ch you challenge actor? Huh? Any, any chef. Yes. Any chef. <laughs> How long have you been cooking, Shamsho? 40, 41 years. 41 years. How old are you, Hector? I'm 29, Chef. <laughs> when was the last time you ate a chicken tikka masala? Um, when I was out of curiosity about 12 years ago. How was it? Uh, horrible. So uh, I didn't like the amount of food colouring in there. I thought it was totally unnatural yeah. in colour. Do you want Shamsho to email the recipe for you? Uh, more than welcome, but it wouldn't find its way into my menu. I mean, Hector, I don't use any colour in my restaurant. What, what colour is it? Natural. Natural colour, even the rice, rice I cook here is not. What, what colour is it? Curry, like a lovely orangey colour from all the caramelisation of the browning of the onions and all the rest of the masala. You freshly grind the spices down in, release flavours, and it'll colour up the curry okay. naturally. All right, but you um, if, it was, if you said it was red, then I'd, I'd, I'd probably say. Well, um, we didn't, but I that's we fine. didn't tell you that. So that's, that's fine. Okay. That's well done. But what I would say, I mean, when you mentioned the tikka masala from you, Bangladesh, after, after. they don't even have that practice but, of cooking in Bangladesh. Apart they don't from use you, the tandoor. Apart from after, having. After, oh, after, Jesus. After, you don't know nothing about Bangladesh or India. <laughs> Let's agree to disagree. No, and Akhtar fine. is an Indian snob. Yes? <laughs> okay? Yeah, I need two tables of four from you, yeah? Yes, and we'll go chef, in the boxing ring after. In. Okay? I'm not my chances, chef. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now, everybody loves a curry, but as Akhtar would tell us, there's so much more to Indian cookery than a chicken tikka masala. Over 6,000 Indian restaurants in the UK serve 3 million happy customers a week, but the vast majority of the dishes they offer are either chicken or lamb. Thank you. It's all delicious. But I believe with such a limited range of meats, we're missing out on a world of culinary opportunity. And to prove this, I'm going to recreate a true Indian classic, using a piece of meat that you won't find on your average Indian menu anywhere. Venison. It's a wonderfully rich, gamey ingredient that's a perfect match for highly spiced flavours. I've come to Scotland in search of the finest wild deer for my delicious new dish. One that deserves a place on any Indian menu. Venison masala. I'm hunting with Mobarak Jan, who regularly stalks deer up here. Most Indian restaurants use halal meat, and I'm keen to know how wild venison can be halal. Mo's a Muslim hunter, and he's going to show me how he does it. What was it that attracted you? Why? Why do you want to start shooting? Well, it's mainly really sort of um, the sort of hunter-gatherer kind of thing, you know, uh -huh. shooting for your own food, yeah. taking it home, taking some venison home, and uh, cooking it up and having beautiful food. Joining us is Jim McCurlin, who's going to help us track down a deer. If you spot one and I haven't seen it, just go Psst. and that's all. Psst. I'll hear it, yeah? Don't okay. point at it. Don't point, don't raise any hands. Are we ready? Let's go. I was born ready. But deer are elusive creatures and incredibly difficult to shoot. And what could spook him? Noise, scent. After two hours, Jim spots our first deer. See those tall trees up there? Yes. He's just out. He's just come out. Here he comes. He's running along the bottom. Fuck, I still can't see him. There he is. Top left. See him? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just as I'm getting ready to take the shot, I lose it. Gordon, that deer's going to be coming back now. Little bastard, come back. Next day, we 
set off again, but the deer always seemed to be one step ahead of us. Finally, after several hours of hard slog, Jim spotted a roe deer. Look, he's silent. Safety off? No. Yep. I follow up with a second shot. He's dead. Yeah, quite a strange feeling to be with, isn't it? Yes. Uh, but when you've got it in your sights like that, your heart's just beating, beating, Absolutely. beating, beating. Yeah. Big deep breath. They call it buck fever. Then it's time for Mo to show me how he makes sure his deer is halal. As well as saying a prayer when he pulls the trigger, he slits the throat in a special way. What I would do yeah. to make it halal, yeah. you used to repeat the prayer, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. And that's it? That's it. One swift back and forth. That's the main thing with halal. The knife has to be razor sharp. We do it this way to get all the blood out the carcass, uh -huh. um, just so it's nice and clean. Well done, Gordon. It's the moment of truth. Time for me to cook my venison masala for Mo and Jim. I'm going to be using venison that Mo shot at the weekend. It's been hung and chilled, and more importantly, he shot it, so therefore it's halal. The first thing we're going to do is make the most amazing dry rub. Mix cumin, fennel seeds, chilli powder, coriander seeds and chilli flakes. Grind that down. Nice. Rub the spices into the meat. Into the pan. Nice. Cook for about four minutes, basting continuously. Then remove from the heat. And as it starts to cool down in the oil, it takes on all that wonderful flavour from the spices. For the masala sauce, grate one onion. Season and add garam masala, turmeric, garlic and ginger. We can afford to make it a little bit more spicy because it's going up against the dense, rich venison. Add chilies, chopped tomatoes and a splash of water. Grate a whole cauliflower and add to the mix. The masala paste starts to absorb it. Finally, add chopped coriander and a squeeze of lemon. And there you go. Now, that's not worth six hours pissing around in the bushes. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but I'm really keen to find out if Mo likes my venison masala. You yeah. got that. You like that? That's good that stuff. Good. That's what I want to see, that smile on your face. That's, that's good stuff. When you think of venison, everyone thinks it's associated with posh dinners, but... I've always thought it goes quite well with the Indian spices, Indian nice. cooking. Quite dense, mm. quite gamey. Yeah. Why don't they use it? across but, Indian cuisine. To be honest, I don't think it's available. It's readily available. There's Ready? other, like, lamb and chicken and stuff. There's a new business for you. Yeah. Halal <laughs> venison. <laughs> Last table of four, Shamsul. Yes, chef. Last table, Akhtar, you've got one yeah. table of two. Last two, yeah? Going down, like, exact same as the first two, yeah? Huh? Yes, yeah, last table, good. Hey, well done, Shamsul. Yes. Well done. I really enjoyed the starter. All the flavours worked together. The meat was really, really tender. Um, the coating was really nice and crispy. It wasn't too spicy. Just a nice balanced dish. Really flavoursome, actually. I was really, really impressed. Um, now, how do you think he's doing tonight? He's doing very well, yeah, as you, expected. I just yeah. take you not in there helping him? Or? No, no, I leave him, no. To, leave him to it. You had the uh, curry corner samosa. How was That's it? That's right. Um, not impressed, I'm afraid. The approach was good. It was authentic in yep. its how, we, how it was intended. And there's the spotty dough. With the pastry. Mm -hmm. too, too heavy, too, too thick. Heavy. Uh, the filling, unfortunately, wasn't flavoursome or um, it lacked salt and other, yeah. other spices. My God, they're getting a kicking from you, aren't they? Oh, my God, now. <laughs> they are. Um, more importantly, are you going to pay for it? No, I'm afraid no. not. Uh, enjoy your main courses. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the start was great, actually. It was really soft and succulent inside. Uh, the spices all complemented each other really well. The lamb was just cooked really well, crispy, pastry. It was to die for, really, really good. Now, nice to see you. How are you? Welcome to the F Word. You look beautiful. Thank you. Huh? Now, how do you think Samsung's doing? How do you think he's bearing up on the pressure? It's very well. He's yeah. doing very good. Are you a proud wife? Of course, of course I'm a proud. Do you want to jump in there again and give him a hand? <laughs> no? No, no, he's all right. He can cope with it. Um, now, what did you think of Lassan's um, samosa? The filling uh, is OK, but the pastry is too thin for me, and I too feel thin. it too oily for me. And the most important question, are you going to be paying for it tonight? No. No? No. <laughs> wow. How was it? Yeah, it was, the samosa itself was, to be honest, yeah, it's all mm -hmm. right. The lamb was very nice, very yeah. well cooked. Go on, yes or no? Are you paying for it? Yeah, I'll pay for it. You're going to pay for yeah. it. Good to see yeah, you. Good. Excellent. Yeah. So, curry corner first. Nice and crispy. 
pastry is fantastic. The samosa filling, I want it to be a little bit more spicy. It's a shame because you start cutting through the pastry and it's like, wow, crispy, delicious, blistered all over. And then you get to the, the centre and it's not as exciting as the outside. Now, actars. Inside, peas, braised lamb. Mm. Wow, that's delicious. It doesn't actually look like a classic samosa. However, the flavour is extraordinary. Right, time to get the scores, yes? How well do you think you did out of 25? Shamshul, how many customers? I think I done very good. Actor, how well do you think you did? 25 out of 25, chef. 25 out, I love your confidence. <laughs> OK, right, JB, let's go. Here we go. OK, curry corner first. The number of customers, yeah, out of 25 that are happy to pay for your samosa is... Wow. 18 out of 25. Well done. Thank you. Really well done. <laughs> really good. 18. Really good. Um, feedback, please. What was um, it? Too oily. The pastry is too, too oily. Too oily. Yeah. Okay, right, left hands. The number of customers out of 25 that are willing to pay for your samosas is... 24 out of 25. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. well done. Yeah. Really well done. Yeah. That yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. Really good news. Really good news. Well done, Mr. Huh? <laughs> now, here we go. 18 out of 25, yes? And 24 out of 25, yeah? Two very good results. Good. Clear down, get ready for main course. Let's go. Well done. <laughs> huh? Now, both restaurants are going to cook their main courses with F-word diners. First up, La San. OK, gentlemen, we've got pan-fried fillet of bass with the Bengali fish broth, please. Lasan's fillet of sea bass in Bengali fish broth is a modern Indian dish, derived from a traditional recipe. First actar heats mustard oil, adds mustard seeds. Just a, a generous pinch, and we're going to wait for that to start popping. Curry leaves, onions and garlic, and allows to sweat. He then adds two whole chilies, snapping them at the ends. The seeds stay inside, but what we're trying to do is get the flavour, because we don't want it to, to make it too hot. Actar adds turmeric, coriander and chilli powder. A little bit more than the coriander, and three times as much as the turmeric. Next, fish heads, full of intense flavour. Akhtar is using Roy, Bengali carp, which adds to the authenticity of this dish. Then he adds tomatoes, coriander, water and simmers. After an hour, the broth is strained. He cooks potatoes in the broth and adds lime juice. The sea bass fillets are seasoned with turmeric, chilli, then coated in rice flour. It's going to help us get the skin very crispy. They're fried skin side down and turned. Pan-fried fillets of sea bass in Bengali fish broth. Served. Nectar, what's the secret behind that broth? The major flavours that are coming through on that is the coriander, garlic yep. and um, tomato with a hint of chilli or a bit of a kick. Looks very nice. Pie, please. Lovely. Uh, Akhtar, yes, yes. from a chef to a chef, yes, chef, I know if you don't get 50 out of 50 paying for your main course, you're going to be gutty tonight. Come on. I'm going to yeah? cry. Yeah. Oh, nine, nine, yeah. nine. You can't let this boy beat you. Come on. <laughs> this is what Curry Corner have on tonight's menu. <laughs> curry Corner's signature dish is monkfish in saffron cream curry. First, Shamsul fries some fresh garlic and ginger. He then adds salt, cardamom pods, cloves, bay leaves, and stirs in a whole crushed cinnamon stick. Shamsul adds onions and red peppers with tomato puree, cumin, turmeric, coriander and chilli powder, measuring by eye with his 40 years of experience. Then he lets the flavours really infuse. Now it's fish. Shamsul then coats the monkfish with pepper, mustard seeds, fennel seeds and ajwan, an Asian spice that tastes a lot like thyme. He then fries the fish. To finish the sauce, Shamsul heats a spoonful of his spice mix in a pan and adds cream. Then milk with saffron and lime leaves, a chopped spring onion, vine tomato and fresh coriander. Finally, he adds his monkfish, coconut milk and shredded coconut. It's complete. Monkfish and saffron cream curry. Served.
What makes that dish stand out? The very, very subtle flavouring from the spices. But it's a very delicate flavour. Akhtar's broth has a strong, pungent kick to it. Yours is very delicate. It's very delicate because the fish is very delicate. Right. And all we need is something to just lift the sweetness of the fish, which is yep. the most important part. Each dish is looking like the first. Let's go. Well done, Samson. Yeah, Service, thank please. you, chef. Service, please. Let's go. Right, now it's time to check on Janet Street Farmer. <gasps> This year, I'm challenging Janice Street Porter to raise all the meat for the competition final at the F-Word restaurant. Last week, she started a farm with seven miniature Dexter cattle. Uh, look, I'm in charge now. This week, I'm adding to Janet's challenge. With the rarest breed of pork we've ever had in the F-Word kitchen, the woolly mangalitsa. <laughs> to help her choose three piglets, I've sent her to meet an old friend, pig expert, Christine Coe. I've forgotten my wellies, so I oh, hope no. they're going to be very wet. Is that a pig? That is a pig. Looks like she's wearing a wig. A you sure this pig hasn't got a toupee on? No, look, give her a stroke. Do look. I have to? Has she got fleas? No, she's be all right. Mangalitsas were first bred in Hungary in the early 19th century. Closely related to wild boar yeah. and with a nervous temperament to match, mangalitsas produce beautiful meat with a stronger, gamier flavour. And as the fattiest pig in the world, they're perfect for salami, cured loin and bacon. Hey, yeah. Oh, it's oh, so wiry, yeah, isn't it? It's wonderful. Oh, my God, it's like coat of pubic hair. Well, not like any pubic hair I've seen. Anyway, enough about the sow. It's time for Janet to meet her piglets. This has taken just over a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> oh. It's not. There you are, there's the first oh, one. Oh, God, it looks like a little rat, doesn't it? Yeah. So they're so tiny when they're born. Absolutely, but they're straight right into the teeth. So they're, they're highly in intelligent. They are. They, they, they always sift the mum's bottom, because that's how they recognise them. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, it's all about so bottoms! <laughs> well, I know they're going to be tasty, because I've just eaten a sausage made from one of their ancestors. <laughs> Six weeks have passed, so they're ready to go to their new mum. And Janet's three now-not-so-little pigs are arriving in Yorkshire. Ah! Oh, sorry! <laughs> Before they can go into the brand-new pen, Janet needs to give them a quick health check. Can I wear these? Yeah, I'm not going to wear them because I need to be able to feel Christy, to Christine, you're at one with pigs. I'm on a learning curve. <laughs> oh, calm down! <laughs> now, we have to try and stay very relaxed around them. <laughs> right, look at its eyes, nice, clear eyes. They're not runny. They're right. not runny. No, it's not runny. Not very runny. No, oh, you're well. fine. Trotters. Trotters look perfect. What dinky little trotters you've got. Can you just have a look at the bottom to see if he's got the runs? Ugh. How do I know? Just look and poke about a bit. I'm not... Ugh, nothing. Good. I'm not waiting for him to have the runs. And what sex is it? What have we got underneath? Well, there's a lump. What does that mean? Have we got anything at the back? I can't <coughs> tell, Christine. I don't know what I'm looking for. <laughs> it's a boy. Thing? How do you know it's a boy? Because <coughs> it's got a really. Probably That's lump. not a lump. That'll do. Oh, stand still, for God's sake. 11 kilos. <coughs> Right, meet your mate. So that they're ready for the F-word restaurant, I need each pig to gain from one and a half to two kilos in weight each week. The equivalent of two bags of sugar. This one's much heavier. But you're leaning on it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's really important to do these checks, particularly after they've had a little bit of stress in a long journey, just to make sure they're starting off healthy. You are now the proud owner of three of the rarest pigs in the UK. They look fantastic. Look, meet the neighbours. Janet's chosen her pigs and cows, and all she needs now to complete her mixed grill is some chickens. Her challenge is about to get even harder. Janet, <laughs> nice you fancy meeting you here. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm really going to see you. Now, cows last week, pigs this week. Yeah. How are they? They're fantastic. Yeah. They're so lively. Really? But I picked a special breed of pig, Mangalix pig. Do you like them? Yeah, I like their hair. Oh, really? Blonde, right. a bit pubic. More sort of the Grecian 2000 grey ish. No, as opposed it's to the like your hair, but oh, right. a bit curly. Oh, right, okay. I think that's why you picked yeah. them, isn't it? So you're now you saying I've got pills. pubes on top of my head. You had trouble finding their penises as well. That is the kind of thing you're obsessed yeah, with. No, I'm not. No, but has, let it, been, me tell has you, it been a problem for In my journey past? through life, <laughs> I've never <laughs> been that obsessed with searching the penises. Is it often Funny enough, I know where they are. If it's down. not worth finding, it's not worth having. Now, really good to see you. Please look after my animals. Safe trip back to the farm. Every time I comb their hair, yes, I'll be thinking of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on, guys, you're the best restaurants to prove it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow night, none of you are going to get another chance to do this again. So That's really, make it count. 
sea bass was pan fried to perfection. It was really lovely in the broth. It was absolutely perfect. The sea bass was quite lively. I think it was quite a modern take on Indian cuisine. Everything together just complemented each other. It was beautiful and I would definitely pay for it. The sea bass, I like very much, but this is the dish I, I find is too hot for me. Oh, the monkfish was amazing. The flavours really worked and, and it wasn't too rich. It was really beautiful. The monkfish, it was quite tough. And I just think that the spices, there was no kick to it, no kick to the dish. Right. So, Latan sea bass looks amazing in terms of presentation. Yeah, it's bold, but it's incredibly delicious. That broth is very, very rich and that wakes up the sea bass. Very good. Curry Corners, monkfish. Looks more traditional. It's very delicate. Um, I like it, but it's not spicy enough. That needs to be a little bit more aggressive in terms of flavour. The sea bass, for me, the broth seals it. Right, let's find out how you did. Out of 50, take an educated guess. What should we say? No, I don't, <laughs> that's so don't know. Don't know. 35? 35 out of 50. Actor, out of 50. <laughs> how well do you think that sea bass went down? I, I'm hoping we'll, we'll be in the high 40s, yep. fingers crossed. OK. Lassa, let's do you first, yeah? The number of customers that are happy to pay for your sea bass out of 50 is... ..40 out of 50. Well done. <laughs> really well done. Well done. 40 out of 50. Really, really well done. That's good. Well done. Really well done. 40 out of 50. That's good. So, JB, uh, 10 customers didn't pay for the sea bass. Why? Yeah, uh, too spicy. But 40 out of 50, that's bloody good. Right, Kerry Corner, the number yeah, of customers willing to pay for your monkfish out of 50 is... 27 out of 50. Wow. 27. <laughs> Damn. That's tough. That's 23 mm -hmm. customers out of 50 yeah. not happy to pay. No. Why not? Um, to blend and the, and the fish too rubbery as well. And the fish being too rubbery? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, don't be disappointed. No, yeah? no. You can pull this back on dessert, yes? You've got to get 25 out of 25 of dessert, <laughs> yes? You're both talented enough to do it, yeah? Clear down, let's go, yeah? Well done. You never know, they, may, they might be able to turn it around. I'm still optimistic that they will, they will win. <laughs> Now, he's one of Britain's most loved comedians. Is his cooking as good as his jokes? I'm about to find out. Are you ready? Yes, very excited, very happy to be here. I'm going to cook some Jamaican food. <laughs> I need dumpling, I need pumpkin, I need yam. Yes, chef. Now, what are you cooking? I'm cooking pepper pot soup. My mum used to cook it, and it's just something that Jamaicans have. She used to serve it in a tureen. Uh-huh for each member of the family. <laughs> it's why our family's so big. We just go, come on now, the food ready. Get a spoon. <laughs> what are you um, making over there? I'm, I'm going to do my childhood favourite soup, scotch broth. Oh, broth scotch broth. Yeah, using mutton and barley. Barley? Yeah. I don't know if you've got food like this, but it's one of those things where you miss it. And so, you know, my mum passed away in 1998. Uh -huh. So when I eat it anywhere, like there's a place in London called um, Savannah Jerk, yep. which is a very good Jamaican restaurant that I love going to. Yep. And they, they gave it to me the other day and uh, I, I sort of burst into tears. Really? <laughs> yeah, because it's... That like, memorable. Well, it's one of those evocative meals, you know, that you kind of think, OK. Of course. So how did Dawn and your mum get on? Really well. Dawn... They bonded straight away? Oh, yeah. First time Dawn came to my house, right, my mum used to do this... It was like a, a cooking test with every new girlfriend, you know. And my mum used to bring this plate of food out like this that was, like, eight feet high. <laughs> and it was chicken and rice and dumpling and green banana and yam and sweet potatoes. And literally, Dawn's head was like that, <laughs> over the top like that. Enjoy yourself, darling. <laughs> And so, um, and what you've got to do is you've got to, you've got to show that you've got some heart and eat it, you know. Yep. And she did eat it. I was very proud of her. Clearly she passed the test. Yeah, she passed the test. How is your Namby Pamby <laughs> scotch broth with <laughs> barley going? Uh, this is my mother's recipe. Excuse oh, me. I she apologise. Your mother is a fine woman. <laughs> <laughs> so scotch broth, uh, like Lenny, I'm going to be using a mutton, partly cooking the mutton in a light stock for 20 minutes so it gets really nice and tender. The important part, bring it up to the ball and skim the top. Vegetables, celery, carrots, Swede turnips and then barley. Okay, what I've done is I've put the meat and the kidney beans in to uh, boil. It says boil 
Typical Jamaican. Boil the meat and the arm, the beans for 20 minutes non-stop until them done. And then put in the vegetables and let them simmer. So I'm, I'm doing the meat bit first. You've had some fantastic reviews from a fellow. Is a fellow a character that you can relate to? I can relate to him a lot, actually, because he's the only black guy in the village. <laughs> <laughs> one of the first schools I went to, I was one of three black kids in the entire school. If anything got stolen, they'd just go, black kid! <laughs> black kid one, get over here! Did Seriously. you do this? As you know, Dawn was a guest in the F word, which uh -huh. I had the most amazing snog. You had a snog with my wife. With was just, uh, you, don't, <laughs> you don't mind, do you? <laughs> yes, I do mind. <laughs> Put your willy on this block and she, let's make toast. She left something. Did she? Can you give it to her when you see her next, please? <laughs> <laughs> a handkerchief! Are there any times across... Very good joke, Gordon. <laughs> it's not like you. you. <laughs> Are there any times uh, across the show, live, that you forget your lines? It's a live performance, you know. Mm -hmm. There are going to be times when your concentration might slip for a brief second. Do you ever get tempted to throw in a little joke, like a... OK? Something, right? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say OK in the middle of bloody I, Othello. Are you nuts? <laughs> I grew up in Strapon Avenue. Um, a home where is your handkerchief, Katanga, my friend? You can't do that! <laughs> I was very tempted the other night. I started saying something three times. The tyrant. The tyrant. <laughs> the tyrant. <laughs> and I was so tempted to go, Shaka Khan. The tyrant. <laughs> so the mutton's been cooking now for 25 minutes. It's now nice and soft. All that fat has been removed. Adding that into the vegetables and then topping that up with the stock. Barley's in, so it's just started to open up. And this is the stock that the mutton's been cooked in. Bring it up to the boil, create the seasoning, turn it down and let it simmer. I'm trying to make the dumplings now. I've also got scotch bonnet pepper in my eyes. Um, <laughs> I've had to take one of my contact lenses out because I'm clearly dying. Right, now both suits have to cook for 20 minutes, then the blind tasters will pick a winner. And I can already smell victory. Something burning over there. Goddamn! <laughs> Right, welcome back to the F-Word now. <laughs> <laughs> Time for the results of the recipe challenge. First, we've got a plate up. Ready? Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mm. Yours smells delicious. Good. Right, JB? Yes? Off you go. Good, Good luck. Thank you, JB. Sure. <laughs> You're doing an audition for a boy band or something? <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys? Hi. Hi. Okay. Good to you. Thank you. Mmm. Spicy. Mm. It's quite thick, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. The lamb could be a bit more tender. It's quite nice, actually. It's just a bit the spicy, a bit. doughy. Mm. That is really nice. This looks nice. Mm. Fresh herbs, deeper flavour. I just had a peppercorn. <laughs> Barley gives a lovely texture. Right, good luck. Good luck, good luck. Uh, oh, no, he's got that look about him. <laughs> OK, let's go. How did they go down first? In yours, they loved the fact it was very, like, homey style. Mm -hmm. um, homey style? Very nice, uh, yeah. Yeah, he stole it from his mother. <laughs> yeah. Right, the score is 4 to 1. Four to one. Mm -hmm. the, the winner is. Yeah! Well done. Yeah! For you, Gordon. I like yours. It was nice. Thank you Perfect like, winter like suit. Too. I got K. Alas, Paul Lenny, I beat him well. Well, of course you beat me. You're now a nine Michelin you. star chef. I'm like a comedian. You Get better thy beat me. Shakespeare you're ass out of my kitchen. Yes! Ah, yes. huh? how competitive uh, is he? Yeah. That's bad, isn't it? Look how happy he is. Come on! Right, now it's time for dessert. It's fantastic to spice up desserts. This is a delicious saffron poached pear with a cardamom custard. First, peel your pears. Half. Core. Add 150 grams of caster sugar to boiling water. Then a pinch of saffron. Poach the pears for 20 minutes. Mint and cardamom custard. Add 300 milliliters of milk to a saucepan. Four crushed cardamom pods. Slowly bring to the boil. Sieve. Three egg yolks. 50 grams of sugar. Add the cardamom infused milk. And return to the heat. Stir constantly and allow to thicken. Mint. Drain the pears. Cast the sugar. Glaze. That smells delicious. Saffron poached pear with mint and cardamom custard. Done. 
Once you've added the sugar into this, you've got to whisk it. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. If you leave it, okay, yeah. it goes grainy. Yeah. There you go. Whisk, whisk, whisk. There, no, good, 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 good. Not, good. not Don't slice them too thin, otherwise they'll break. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good. That's it. Uh, Shamsul. Yes, sir. Yes, I told you your dear lady earlier, your wife. She's yes, very proud sir. of you tonight. You know that. And Marusha too. But she doesn't think Actel's a man for you, by the way. Yeah. Right? Just in case. <laughs> There'll be a lot of mothers who think that. <laughs> good, good, good. Service, please. Very nice. Very nice. That custard looks fantastic. Okay, well done. Good. It must be hard for you walking around Cheltenham. They ask you uh, for autographs, thinking that you're George Clooney. <laughs> Come on. No. Do, do they? No. That's no? all the yeah. time. That's all the time. <laughs> See? Yeah. Easy. OK, how are we doing? That's it. OK? Yes, chef. Good. Are we ready to go? Yes. Good. Lovely. Good. Excellent. I thought it was marvellous. I love the contrast of savoury and sweet. It was absolutely beautiful. The crispy mint was just perfect. And it, it just blended everything together perfectly. Thoroughly enjoyable. Really enjoyed it. I feel it's still very light, very nice. It was light, it was fragrant, and generally I really enjoyed it and I might have finished my sister's. Okay, first off, end of the night, well done. I think all four of you done brilliantly well. And you yeah. are a true legend. Yes? Thank you. Well done. Really well done. Okay, ready for the results? JB, please. Mm. Okay, thank you. Curry Corner, let's start with you first, yes? The number of customers that are happy to pay out of 25 for their dessert is... ..19 out of 25. Well done. Oh, really okay. fantastic. <laughs> huh? That's great news. That means, in total, you have got 64 out of 100. Well done. <laughs> right, really well done. Really good indeed. OK, that's it. This is a big moment. It is, sir. The number of Edward Diners, yes, that are happy to pay out of 25, yeah, for your poached pears is... 12 out of 25. <laughs> but there is good news because you have a total of 76 out of 100. <laughs> You're the winners. Well done. Congratulate them. Huh? Well done. Really well done indeed. Huh? Well done. Great start. Great meal. Yes. Media Grand. Well done. Really well done. One of my darling. Congratulations. Thank you. you. Now, all of you, do me a big favour and get out of here and get yourself a lassie. Well done. Thank you. Uh, really well done. Well done, well done. Excellent. The sensation is absolutely amazing. I mean, you know, we've made it so far and to have won as well. I mean, I'm just shaking inside. I mean, it's just. So, Lasano are in first place on the F-word leaderboard. But can they hold on to the top spot and go through to the next round?